Us at 11 is about another triangle congruence theorem. So this one is the angle side angle. So we've learned side, 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 and then side angle side. Um, this one is kind of like the reverse, for lack of better terms, of the side angle side. So starting at the top, the angle side angle or ASA triangle congruence theorem reads if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle then the triangles are congruent. So this time we have two angles, angle A, angle B, and then the included side is the side that's in between those two angles. So we'll just kind of look at this example right here and show why um, we could use that theorem between those two. So we can see like, we know that angle A and angle K are congruent because they both have the two angle lines, and then angle B and angle L are congruent because they both have the one angle line. And then segment or side AB and KL are congruent as well because they have the one tick mark. So we have, you know, two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent, A and K and B and L. And then we also have their included side that are congruent. So, like, yes, we could use this theorem here because we have the angle, the angle, and the side in the middle that are congruent. And one thing I want to mention before I move forward is the order that they write like these like angle side angle or ASA like it's not by accident or by chance. They're kind of like describing the order of it on the triangle also. So like this is like angle side angle. And so like that side part that's in the middle is like kind of saying that it's included like it's in between the two angles. So for why does it work, there's a couple different things that are mentioned in the workbook. So if you want to check those out, you're more than welcome to. This is just one of the shorter ones. So let's say I have two congruent segments, A, B, and K, L. And then off those two congruent segments, I create a pair of congruent angles. So kind of like that, like those rays shooting upward. And then I create a second pair of congruent angles. There's only one way to get the triangle to close, essentially, if the angles are congruent. So that's why this theorem works, is because if we have, you know, this the same side length and then the two matching angles, everything else has to be the same between the two triangles. So down to 11.2, this is the proof. At the top, there's kind of like, there's a new theorem kind of stuck in there. Um, this is one of those theorems that I feel like kind of is like, why is this even a theorem? But everything is a theorem in math. So um, this one is the right angle theorem. So something to kind of add to your list of all the theorems, postulates and stuff. And by the way, definitely add the angle side angle. I don't know if I said that before, but hopefully you added it and you're keeping the list going. Um, Okay, so the right angle theorem, like we know that right angles are 90 degrees, but um, the right angle theorem says that all right angles are congruent. So you do, you use that as a justification when you're writing proofs that if you see two different right angles, you can say that they're congruent because you know they're both 90 degrees, so they're the same size. Okay, so for our proof, um, we're given that angle B and angle D are congruent. So B and D they even have like little matching angle symbols. And then segment AE is a segment bisector of BD. So AE, that's this one, is a bisector of BD, which is this one. And it, they do show you that with like the two little tick marks that it's cutting it in half. So we have that, we have the written version, we have the like on the graphic itself, and then now we're trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. So one thing I just kind of want to like remind you is, you know, think about what section you're in, think about what theorem you just kind of learn, because as we're getting comfortable with proofs, um, it's going to kind of help you, um, I guess, like, form a plan for writing your proof. So we're trying to write a proof with the angle side angle theorem. So we want to find two pairs of congruent angles and their included side. So we know that B and D are congruent. We can see that, you know, like this and this, like DC and BC are congruent because it's an angle bisector and they put those little tick marks there for us. So we just need one more angle. We just need like the angle that would make those like two segments I put in green included. So those would be like this angle and this angle. So if I can show that all those things are true, then I can use this theorem to state that the two triangles are congruent. 
Okay, so we always start with um, what's given to us. So we'll go ahead and just state that angle B is congruent to angle D. And then the reason is that it's given. And then the second piece of information now is segment AE is a bisector, a segment bisector of BD. Okay, so segment AE is a segment bisector of BD. We already kind of talked about this with the graphic, but we just have to state it in our proof as well. Um, imagine proofs as like being something you have to be like as um, like step by step as you possibly can. Like you can't really combine steps with proofs. So um, for number three or for statement number three, um, one thing that we can state that we talked about but is not like in our proof yet is the fact that these two segments or these two sides are congruent. So I know that they like label it as like they have the same tick marks, but it's not given to us. So we need to write it. So we would say segment BC is congruent to segment CD. So segment BC is congruent to segment CD. Um, I know we know that based on like, because they had the tick marks on there, but um, even if they didn't, the fact that they said like it was given to us that AE is a segment bisector. So that means that it cuts this segment in half. So that would make those two like half segments the same size. So our like reason for like them being grown isn't like, oh, they told us they gave us like the tick marks. It's has to do with the fact that there's a segment bisector. So we would just say definition of a segment bisector and then so so far on our graphic we have you know the two angles b and d are congruent that was given to us um we just showed that bc or we just at least like kind of proved i know we kind of knew it from the start we just proved that bc is congruent to cd so so far we have these two angles that we know are congruent and then we have these two segments that we know are congruent. So if we're trying to show congruence using like the angle side angle, we have to prove that the angles that like kind of include um, that congruent segment are, con that's a lot of words, like a difficult words, like a tongue twister. Anyways, um, we need to show that these two angles are congruent. Because if I can prove that those two angles are congruent, then it's like angle side angle and then is congruent to angle side angle over here. So that's the one I'm going for that angle or the angles that are like surrounding C. Um, so you may look at them and be like, okay, well they're vertical. So I know vertical angles are the same, but you have to prove that. So first we can state that they're vertical angles and then just by definition, and then we can use the vertical angles theorem to show that vertical angles are congruent. So we have to do it in two steps. So first we would write it as angle A, C, B. we can't just write angle C because like angle C could be on either side. So we do A, C, B, to angle A, C, B, and then just remember the vertex is supposed to be the middle letter, so that's why C is in the middle. Um, and angle E, C, D are vertical angles. So angle E, C, D are vertical angles. I ran out of room a little bit. So that last little part is short for vertical angles. And that's just by definition, like that's what a vertical angles are. It's the two angles that are opposite each other when two lines intersect or two segments intersect. So for our reason, this would be definition of a vertical angle or vertical angles. And then now that we've stated they are vertical angles, we can go ahead and say that the angles are congruent by the vertical angles theorem. So we say angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD, and that's by the vertical angles theorem.
And then the vertical angles theorem was given and in like introduced in lesson 10. So if you missed, I would go back and look at the lesson 10 video. So now, just kind of showing like what we've shown so far, what we're given. So um, we know B and D are congruent, angle B and angle D. And then um, we know that these two segments are congruent. And then we just showed that like both sides of that like angle C are congruent to each other. So now I have angle side angle and angle side angle, like the corresponding pairs um, with the included side are congruent. So we can say that the triangles are congruent. So we say triangle, oops, A, B, C is congruent to triangle E, D, C. And notice like I know that the order of like the letters is different than when I wrote the angle. The angle, it's really important for the vertex to be in the middle. For the triangle, it's like three vertices. So like it doesn't have to be in the middle, but you just have to pair up the like corresponding letters. So like A and E right here and right here, those are corresponding. And then um, B and D, those are corresponding. And then of course, like C and C on each side are corresponding. Okay, and then our reason for this one is the angle side angle you can just do asa congruence theorem and then just remember that whatever we're trying to prove so like prove triangle abc is congruent to triangle edc that should always be your last statement on your proof so the last problem, the angle side angle and problem solving 11.3, it says assume that you want to find the distance across the river. Um, in the workbook itself, there's a ton of more information, but we're kind of given the graphic, which is pretty much all we need to know, other than um, we just need to include that angle L and angle N are right angles. They were created by making like a 90 degree turn. And then also the units are in feet. So in, um, sorry, back over the top, I'm um, assuming that you want to find the distance across a river. So across a river, that's this length right here. In order to do this, use a pedometer and a GPS device to keep track of how far you walk in each direction. So I'm just going to go through and label as many pieces of the triangle as like we know, just based on what we know about triangles, angles, and our theorems and stuff. So let's see. So these two sides or not angles those sorry those two angles um are vertical angles so that means that those are the same and then we know that any like right angle or 90 degree angle those are the same so so far we know like these angles are congruent um these angles are congruent and then we're also given that the side that's included between those two angles is congruent so all of a sudden, like, we can say that these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle, because it's, like, angle, side, angle is congruent to angle, side, angle. So it's enough to say, like, the triangles are completely congruent and, like, all their corresponding sides are the same. So that being said, um, this side that goes, like, across the river, it's hard to see, um, the side that goes across the river is corresponding with this side over here. So that means that the side that goes across the river is also going to be 550. So the distance across the river is 550 feet.